I don't know what to say. I come from Norway and this is a lot of people. <laughs> so I'm coming all, from, all the way from Norway to bring you a, a touch of pink for you. I just completed my master thesis at NUTS. That's the Norwegian University of Technology and Science. The administration have just kind of switched it to last letters because someone created a lot of t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, so I work at a company called Itera and I'm a developer, full-time developer. So let's get started. Um, at first, um, everybody probably knows that humans are predictable. And that's, when you talk about security, that's kind of a, not a good thing. So when you look at, look at the different lock, locking mechanism on mobile devices, you're probably seeing the, all of them. You probably know the common strategies for selecting both PIN codes and passcodes using date of birth, names, etc. But the different thing with the Android lock pattern is that it does not have a semantic meaning. It's only dots and you cannot kind of use the same strategies as when using a PIN code and a password. So, just to give a recap, you know, with PIN codes, there are 10,000 combinations. How many PIN codes or pa patterns does the Android unlock pattern have? That's a pretty or bigger number than the, pin, than the PIN code. And the interesting thing is, yeah, the numbers for you. Um, when you're going to, um, yeah, sorry. When, the, when I started this project, um, I've um, started to think about uh, how people created their pin codes and the passwords as I said, using names and, and um, names and date of birth and such. But the, the Android Pelalog, you can't use their things. So how, what can you do to predict pe people's patterns? So I started by creating a survey for collecting data. I collected about 3,400 user-selected patterns and additional data about the patterns or the user that created the patterns. So I asked all the people that participated to create a pattern for a shopping account, a smartphone, and a banking account, just to give um, the patterns a kind of a context. Just wanted to, I just, if you look at it, you can probably guess. I just think it was kind of funny because the people that had used the a ALP, that's the dark color, and the light color is the people that uh, have not used the ALP before. As you can see, the, the numbers, that's the reaction time, how fast the, the respond, respondents were creating the patterns. And as you can see for the smartphone, people that have created the patterns, before, or have used the pattern lock before, were responding very quickly. You can kind of guess what's why they were actually giving the patterns so predictable. So what can you use kind of, what factors can you look at when you're going to predict someone's pattern? For instance, you have two hands. You might be in, even right or left-handed. You have a reading and writing direction. And your phone has a screen size. You have, there is a difference in gender and age. Uh, first, I want to say something about the visual complexity because the, the pattern lock is not the same as every, uh, any other 
um, uh, pattern law or any other pin code because it's visual, uh, meaning that you cannot just judge a pin or pattern lock based on the number of connected nodes. So I used a mathematical formula for kind of giving each pattern a score, just how, how visual complex is the pattern. I'm gonna give you an example. So the two upper, the blue ones, both are of length nine. But when you have, if you're standing behind someone's back, you will probably be easily be guessing the, the first one. But the second one is more complex, but it's still the same number of connected dots. So what I, I spotted with the, uh, with the complexity score is that actually this, the patterns created for the smartphone was the lowest score because I asked the participant to create three different patterns. And nobody that participated, there was, was about 850 people participating in the, in the study. And nobody managed to create a pattern of the maximum score. I was kind of thinking that people would take it, take it as a challenge when I gave the survey and people would kind of try to create the most complex pattern they knew about, but nobody managed. So that's kind of uh, the same as when, with uh, passwords and pin codes. People are not able to, to remember or create complex patterns or passwords. Uh, one of the things that I, I told you about was that the pattern, you cannot use names and date of birth, for, for example. But when I, when I started collecting pa the patterns, people were coming up to me and, uh, and told me that, you know, my mom used her, her first letter in her name as a pin code. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went through all the collected patterns um, that was kind of possible to form or what was corresponding to a letter in the alphabet. And it was kind of interesting that 10.4% of the data set were corresponding to a letter from the alphabet. That's one in a 10 patterns, one in 10. If you pick up a phone, a one in 10 would have, probably have a pattern corresponding to a letter. And that was kind of interesting. One of the things with the Android pattern lock is that you can only select one node once. Meaning that if you knew the starting point, for example, you can reduce the number of patterns, the possible patterns. Just give you some seconds to look at that. So, In the data set, 44% of all the pattern were starting in the upper left corner. And if you kind of look at the, all the green ones, that's the three corners, you get a 73%. So, and if you combine all the corners, there is a 77% chance of a pattern starting in one of the corner. How predictable. But if you look at everyone in the room, there is only about 10% of you that's likely to be left-handed and 90% of you will probably be right-handed. So I was, I was thinking that because um, I look at, there is probably two main ways of creating a pattern on the screen. You're probably seeing either using one hand or two hands. So if you use one hand, you will probably use your thumb to create a pattern. Or if you use two hands, you'll probably use the forefinger to interact with the screen. So if, if I was, for instance, left-handed, 10% of the population, would it be the same? Would I start in the same corner? So kind of if I 
was holding a left-handed person phone, would the pattern be started, or 44% of the pattern start in the other corner on the other side? So for the right hand then, the two pictures are the likely starting point for either holding with one hand and two hand and being right-handed. And the number looks pretty similar to the number I showed you in the other uh, for all the patterns. When looking at left-handed, I was kind of disappointed because that were not the, the numbers I was kind of was predicting in the first place. So I was like, why? So either left hand or right handing using one hand using two hands, either way people start on the left hand side and particularly up in the upper left corner. And I was like, at first I didn't, I didn't understand why, but then what th I was thinking about the reading and writing direction because Research have found that if you give a person a set of images, if you read from left to right, you will probably be scanning the pictures from left to right, so remembering the picture from left to right. But if you had, the test also tested this on uh, people having an, another reading and writing direction. So if reading from right to left, having, for example, an Arabic background, the people started scanning the pictures from right to left. So unfortunately, I didn't get a lot of Arabic or other people having another reading and writing direction. But I still have a strong, strongly believe that if I knew uh, the reading and writing direction, it would correspond to where you start to create a pattern. So I will not give you a kind of a list of this is the top 10 patterns and how, yeah. It is more interesting to look at how people behave and where you kind of select or create your patterns. So these are what is called a three gram. That's a set of three, three connected nodes. And as you can see in the blue one, that's the most commonly selected three grams meaning that people actually create the patterns sticking to the edge. And it's kind of hard to show here at this view, but lines such as you probably know that you can go from the upper left corner to the bottom. Such, such patterns or lines are not, there are really few of the patterns having a line crossing from the upper left to the bottom, the middle of the bottom. The lines are straight and adjacent, uh, connected to the next node next to the. So, it's also funny to look at the length of, of, of a pattern. So, I also collected the gender of of the participants. And I don't know if it's just you male, male participants preferring length or women being less, thinking less about security, I don't know. So just to show, just not to just generate an average length, there's a distribution of the length selected and the upper uh, the graph on the top is um, for male and the bottom is for female. And as you can see, the, the bottom graph has uh, a higher percentage of selected patterns of lower lengths. And one funny observation is that you see the patterns of length eight. There is really few patterns of length eight. In, the, in my data set, there was kind of four, on average, 4% of the patterns had a length A. If it, I, I barely show the calculation of how many patterns had of the different lengths, but there's actually 140,000 
pattern starting with the length eight. And as well, when looking at looking at the age of the participants, there were the younger the person were, the stronger pattern were created for all all the three different patterns. So for both the shopping, the mobile phone, and the banking account, the younger the participants were. the stronger patterns. So by using this, this is kind of a brief introduction to, to all the results that was found. But I hope in the future to kind of use the data as far as, as I have now, there's a build, uh, for example, a Marco model, because I only have 3,400 patterns, but there's 389,000 patterns, and how can we be able to predict every pattern if I don't have the pattern in my data set? So by using, there is already, um, I already have a Marco model kind of predicting that I've been de developed by a German researcher uh, that can predict the likelihood of a pattern being selected based on the three grams that I showed you. So using the predictable ways of creating a patterns, a likelihood of selecting a pattern can be estimated. And in the future, to use this information that I have to reduce the number of patterns, to be able to add the information about the creators to see if we can kind of get a better model of being able to predict a pattern based on the person or who the person are. So, for now, there is about two or three minutes left. So I might be able to take a couple of questions before I leave. I will be able, I, I will stand here next to the scene if someone want to come and talk and ask questions. Thank you.